Hey, my name is Shu, and you're watching Rerolling Ones. A lot of people ask us about the terrain we use in our videos. So, I'm going to answer some of the questions about the pre-made and purchased stuff that we use, and also some questions about uh, the stuff that we built. If you have more questions after the video, put them in the comments below, and I will answer them. First up, I want to tell you about this beautiful resin terrain set from GameMat.eu. It arrives pre-painted, and uh, it's pretty sturdy stuff. I can uh, pick it up here. It's fairly lightweight. This piece is about uh, one or two pounds. Um, interestingly enough, one of my pieces arrived broken, and they replaced it for me. Their customer service is incredible. Um, but I can actually show you what that looks like on the inside here. The pieces are actually kind of, um, looks like they're hollow, and so they are... Uh, yeah, this is a better version of what it looks like when they're broken. Um, it's, it's pretty sturdy stuff, even though it's got a pretty nasty crack in it. Uh, we still use this piece, and it, it's functional for us. Uh, as far as the uh, quality of the paint goes, you can have a look here. It's just fairly uh, base-coated and dry-brushed. Um, this piece is quite dusty now, as, as I've had it a long time. The uh, Gothic Ruin set comes with everything you see here, a uh, relatively large piece. Um, Four of these small pieces, two of these medium-sized pieces, and uh, two of those large pieces there. They are symmetrical with each other. There's a lot of play space on the inside for miniatures to go. Uh, let me grab a model and show you what it looks like. Just to look extra out of place here, here's the uh, Savage Orc Big Boss. I'm going to show you kind of what he looks like on each of the tiers. He's not a short model necessarily, he's a 28mm by, uh, model by scale. Um, but he's kind of standing on his tippy toes, leaping into the fray. Um, kind of gives you an idea of the scale of the specific set. These Gothic Ruins are good for both AOS and 40k. Uh, they certainly don't look out of sorts in either environment. One more thing that comes with the set are these interesting uh, window stopper pieces. They're really good for scattered terrain if you leave them on, down on the floor, or you can uh, uh, use them to stop up the access points in some of this terrain. I think this larger piece here goes on this large piece there. So you see how it kind of slaps in. It allows you to uh, create modular options to block a line of sight or to create pathways. Um, we've used this specific set before to create walls. When you stack all the pieces together, it kind of looks like the, a great wall of a ruined city or something like that. It's really good for pushing narrative purposes. If you're a D&D &D player, I think that this terrain would fit really well into your uh, campaign setting. Um, there's really not a lot you can complain about with this specific set. It comes pre-painted. It's a little expensive, but I think it's one of the finer investments I've ever made as far as terrain goes. Next up, we'll talk about the terrain that we built ourselves. Ah, and it's all here. This is uh, mostly terrain that we built ourselves with some uh, kind of handy-dandy store-bought items. Uh, let's kick it off with this weird thing here. This is... Um, these are actually lanterns from the dollar store. I took some two-part epoxy and stuck them together. And uh, you can actually turn them on. That's pretty nerdy. You can have little... There's an elf in them towers. Um, these are pieces of... Oh, what is that? Uh, foam core that I used a green stuff... Greenstuffworld.com rolling pin with the some kind of decorative design on it. I think chaos or something like that. Uh, and I just created a little basing for these uh, towers to go on to so it didn't look too weird to have them kind of jutting out of rock. Um, these are trees from Woodland Scenics in the back here. Um, this material is actually all expanding foam, this stuff. So expanding foam is this material you get, and in the United States we call it great stuff. Um, you can, uh, it comes in like a, a can and it has a straw and you spray it out and it's used for gap filling and insulation. So, depending on your country you're in, uh, you might be able to find it either as great stuff or as some other brand. But what we do is uh, we spray it onto uh, this terrain, onto a, let me actually lift this one up so you can see the underside. We spray it onto a piece of uh, uh, MDF that I've cut down and kind of, uh, what's the word for it? You take the edge off it. Uh, <laughs> why is my brain locking up? Um, routing? You route down the edges? Anyway, I filed down the edges. And uh, from there, I sprayed on the Great Stuff foam. The interesting thing about Great Stuff is that when it sets up, it, like, it curls up, and it wants to make itself into a little ball. 
And when it does that, it actually bows the wood really badly. So in order to fix that, you have to cut it right down the middle like a loaf of bread. <laughs> cut it each direction the next morning and it'll kind of separate. And then from there you have to fill it up. So what I did is I filled it up with a joint compound and then I brushed the joint compound uh, once it dried off and brushed the joint compound with a wire brush and that kind of left it looking, uh, you can kind of see the striations here, the a little striated from, you know, to, to make it look more natural, I guess, but it's pretty clearly foam. You can tell that's what it is. When the whole thing was dry, I covered it with like uh, sand and um, PVA mixture, and you actually see it's chipped off here a little bit. But at the end, I sealed it with Mod Podge, and Mod Podge is the secret weapon in any terrain builder's toolbox, in my opinion. It makes it super tough. And uh, the sand here, I've seen sand fall off of terrain for years in, in various game stores, and this stuff is like, I can't even take it off of my fingernails. So it's, it's really, really stuck on there. This weird tree you're looking at here is a big hunk of floral wire that is covered in like this rubber shielding. Uh, and I twisted it into the shape of a tree, roughly, and I stuck it onto the foam using cocktail sticks and used two-part epoxy to glue it down. Two-part epoxy will not melt uh, expanding foam. Uh, from there, I, of course, you know, you can kind of cut the foam out to be whatever size and shape you want. And this one has a lot of playable space on it. If you are making your own terrain, I highly recommend that you take a base of a miniature that you have in your collection and you kind of make sure that the bases are going to go into the playable space on your terrain. Uh, Age of Sigmar has, has some issues with terrain where, uh, you know, your guys are trying to pile in and maybe there's a dude up here. If this is less than half an inch, or more than half an inch, they're not going to be able to attack them because there's no wobbly model syndrome in AOS. So just something to think about if you're making AOS terrain or if you're making terrain for some other system, you want your your dudes to be able to, you know, make combat with each other because it's a game you're trying to play, not a perfect simulation. You'll notice a lot of this terrain is actually not designed to have a lot of interactive space. Uh, that's intentional because we wanted to have a lot of uh, kind of valleys and have a lot of line of sight blocking stuff and the off chance that one of us decides to make a shooting based army and take it to tournaments. I'm looking at you, Jack. Right here, this is an interesting piece. You can actually see the expanding foam at the bottom here. It's, I just kind of, uh, there was no top to this. So this is a, an old Citadel kit. I'm not sure what it is, the, the Mage Wrath Throne, I think. I'm not sure. It had a chair on the top, I think. But I took that expanding foam and <laughs> literally stuck it on here, made an ice cream cone of foam out of it. And then from there, I covered it in a, I, you know, shaped it up with a, a razor. Then I covered it in a joint compound and then flocked it and stuck these trees in it. These trees are rescue trees. I didn't actually make these. Uh, they're model train set trees that some other hobbyist had built for a game store that went out of business. And I ended up with a lot of their, a lot of their stuff. Thanks to my buddy Parker. You're awesome, Parker. This is just an example of how you can take something that used to be a one way and make it another way and kind of recycle it and find new value out of it. This here is, uh, again, most of this stuff is based on MDF wood. It's, uh, I think, four millimeter. Yeah, I'm not really good at the millimeters, you guys. Um, these, these are literally hunks of pine bark that I got from the hardware store. And I, you know, you put them at a certain angle and then it kind of look like boulders to the untrained eye. Uh, this stuff is really falling apart. These are Woodland Scenics model train trees that I stuck uh, some uh, what is it called? Tacky glue down, and then I, you rolled it up in a in a kind of a um, what is the word for it? Um, this flocking, coarse turf. I want to say medium density flock, something like that. This is a uh, junky seven dollar wonder tree from Amazon, where basically you get pay seven dollars and you get a whole bunch of these really kind of ratty, not to scale for anything trees, but they're really good for shrubbery. Uh, down below, uh, I had some, I found some trees at um, like a dollar store that were not, I mean, the, all, all, the entire tree looked like this, but then I cut them up and made them into little bushes, and I feel like they, they kind of serve the purpose of, you know, being convincing shrubbery or whatnot. So this is kind of cool. It has some playable space to it, uh, but these other pieces here are not, uh, they do not have playable space. They're just kind of designed to be line of sight blocking or to add some atmosphere to the tree uh, or to the table. <laughs> atmosphere to these trees. Uh, they add atmosphere to the table. Uh, these are both, uh, or actually all three of these pieces are borrowed from uh, 
you know, they say all great artists borrow. Uh, these are similar in design to the kind of trees you'll see from Greenleaf Terrain. I'll put a link to his channel and website below. Uh, Greenleaf Terrain is a pretty immensely talented dude who sells um, scattered terrain and has been doing it for a long time, a lot better than uh, me for sure. So uh, if you're looking at uh, your shopping for terrain, I don't know if he still sells stuff, but I think he does. Um, you should check it out. You'll see his tr work all over mini wargaming and uh, grill miniature games and that kind of thing. In the back here, I've got yet another piece of expanded foam terrain with one of those twisty trees on the top. Again, that's just the, uh, um, this is just the floral wire. When I was done twisting the floral wire, oh, I forgot to mention this part. I put caulking over the inside of it, um, or over the outside of it, and just kind of like smeared it on. And that worked okay, but you can kind of see that it's cracking a little bit here. Not, you know, a little worse for wear. That's okay. Um, it was designed to flex and take a lot of weight, and it's doing its job for now. This is a big fake plant from Ikea. I think they're $4. Um, and I literally just jammed it onto the end of the tree trunk and it looks okay. It's not the greatest. If I find some fake plants that are a little bit more to scale, I'll use those. But for, you know, a great big forest in a fantasy setting, you just really want some bushy stuff out there. And that is more or less the stuff we've built ourselves. I've got more homemade terrain coming for the channel. There's a pine forest that's drying right now in the garage. You know what? I'm just gonna take you to show you. This is the workstation I have in my garage. It's an absolute mess, a complete disaster. That's because a lot of good stuff gets done here. I have a really crappy airbrush, which I love. I've been using it for many years. It's held tried and true. This can is actually here for rinsing. It's got nothing in it. Uh, keep all kinds of accoutrements around for super gluing things and for airbrushing things and rinsing things. And you can never have too much PVA glue. And I don't know what this is. I think one of my kids is playing with it and broke it, and they want me to glue it. That was a few months ago. Sorry, guys. I haven't fixed it yet. But over here, this is the interesting part. These are some trees that uh, I bought around Christmas time. These are, let me get some light on them. These are Christmas trees that you can get in the kind of Christmas village packs for around $20, something like that. They went on sale. Black Magic Craft uh, is another. YouTube channel that does terrain. He went and said that they were on sale and I ran out and <laughs> picked them up that day. And then he did this technique where he uh, drenches them in PVA glue and then flocks them and it, they looked beautiful on his channel. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna follow this tutorial and do a thing. And I did, and they look beautiful. So I don't know, I have high hopes for them. I don't know if they're gonna be perfectly awesome because that dude is a total professional and I am just a schlub who watches YouTube. But if I can do it, I think you can do it. You should give it a shot. You'll see this coming up soon on the channel, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's in the works that I should tell you guys about. Hmm. Yeah, don't look at that. Well, there you have it. All the terrain we have on our channel. Well, a lot of it anyways. Um, there's still a ton of it up in here. We have uh, scattered terrain, the Garden War, some other stuff that uh, we've painted and you know don't use that often. You know, some grassy grassy hills, that kind of thing. This this stuff is kind of fun. It's from 40k terrain, some spires. Uh, what are they called? Netherrack spires? Something like that. And uh, a bunch of pine trees from uh, model trains. I don't think I really told you guys that I redid this whole room. It's one of the reasons why I didn't do battle reports for a couple of days. Um, we got a painting station over here. We got an audio and video editing station here. That's where I play video games and blow people up. Uh, over here is the new display cabinet. Um, I've got a fun project down there I'll talk about once it's painted. I've got a buddy who uh, loves Black Magic Crafts channel and has invested in a Proxon foam cutter and made a work of art for us. So that's going to be a really cool thing we have coming soon. And uh, yeah, so this is the new studio space. Nice part about this is that we'll be able to completely walk around our table as we're playing our games. And that will help a lot for being able to reach things and that kind of thing. Lighting hasn't really changed. Uh, I would you know, pan up and show you the lights in here, but they are obnoxiously bright. Let's do this. All right, I've turned the lights off. Focus, focus. You can kind of see the uh, studio lights here. Hopefully you can see that. 
Um, there are four LED panel lights we got from a hardware store. I think they're about 20 bucks each. I don't know. But we, you see that we, uh, we ripped the old light fixture down and just kind of ran, jury rigged some uh, wiring to it. That's probably not to code, but hey, that is the scope of our new studio space. So if you have any questions or you want to know stuff about how we did things, or about how do you can do stuff, or if you, if I mentioned something I didn't put a link to, please ask for it. Um, and thanks for watching, man. It's really cool that you came by and had, or I call everybody, man. Don't take it personal. Uh, thanks for coming by and having a look at our stuff. Thanks for watching our channel. Thanks for watching our battle reports. We are so grateful to you guys. We have uh, had no idea that this would be as successful as it's been. We're just a bunch of nerds who play Warhammer and. It's great to have you along. Thanks for watching.